Dr. Adalja, clearly this is spreading quite rapidly, and it is doing so even in people who are fully vaccinated and boosted. If that is the case, can we vaccinate our way out of the wave of this variant, or is the only answer here more restrictive measures? It's sort of neither. We can't vaccinate our way out, but I think we have to start to think about what we're, what are our goals with this pandemic? What are our goals with COVID-19? And this is not a disease that can be eradicated or eliminated. Our goal is to decouple cases from hospitalizations. And when you look at the cases that are occurring in vaccinated individuals and boosted individuals, they are mild. They usually don't even require a call to the doctor. That's a good thing, that's a victory. So I think we have to emphasize the severity of illness. So if vaccinated people have mild illnesses, I think that's a victory for the vaccines and a victory for us. What we're seeing in the hospitals, and I, last weekend I worked in the hospital the whole weekend, what you're seeing are unvaccinated individuals that are occupying ICU beds, occupying other beds, and stressing, uh, st stressing the staff. So I think we have to draw a separation there. Cases are always going to be there, especially with a variant like this. It's all about making sure our hospitals don't go over capacity. And I think you're going to hear some of that in the president's speech today about how they're going to, to shore up those hospitals. And I think that's how we move forward, this kind of two-track pandemic, one for the vaccinated and one for the unvaccinated. Well, speaking of our hospital systems and the possibility that they get overwhelmed, given the trajectory of cases already, how quickly could we see that happen? It's likely going to be in the next couple of weeks where we see stress on hospitals. And some hospitals will be able to absorb it, but others are going to have a lot of difficulty because even though Omicron is 73% of the cases sequence, Delta is probably the predominant version of the virus that's hitting hospitals right now and has a lot of patients with Delta inside them. So they're going to be dealing with Delta and then Omicron on top of it. Delta will eventually fade away but if they get too many patients at one time, it can be very, very difficult. And I think this is gonna be a regional rather than a systemic problem. And we have healthcare coalitions, hospitals that work together. They have to really do that for real. They can't just check a box if they're part of a coalition. They have to load balance and make sure that no hospital is going down. And hopefully the coordination from the federal government with the National Disaster Medical System with the Department of Defense, they'll be able to do that in a much more efficient way. But this is not the same thing as December 2020. We're in a much better place, even though there are scary headlines, even though we have this new variant. We've got a lot more tools and a lot more knowledge. Dr. Adalja, good morning. So we have a lot more tools. This isn't December 2020. It's not the same uh, situation at all. We're, we're very vaccinated in wealthy countries around the world, of course. You did, drew a distinction there between the, the load placed on hospitals by the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Is that going to be evident, do you think, in the president's speech later on? Is it possible to craft different policies for these different parts of, of society that will be palatable to, to U.S. citizens? I do hope the president places the blame squarely where it is, because like I said, it's not people that lack a booster shot. It's not people who, who, who are fully vaccinated that are getting hospitalized. It's people who lack any shots. And in the United States, that's being done willfully. People are choosing not to get vaccinated and then choosing to destroy their community hospitals. And I do think that we should draft policies different for the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, because if you are vaccinated, the virus treats you very differently. So other people should treat you very differently. That's how I think we have to move forward, because what we see is the vaccinated have done everything they can to preserve hospital capacity by getting vaccinated, by following the science. But then you have this group of people and they're concentrated in certain parts of the country, in certain regions. They are not vaccinated by choice. And what they're doing is crushing their own community hospitals. And I think we have to call that out because this is being this is something that didn't have to be. These are all vaccine preventable hospitalizations, vaccine preventable deaths. And these people are choosing to do this. And I think that's something that needs to be called out, even if it angers people. I think it's the truth. Doctor, I'd like to talk a little bit about the variant itself and what we've learned so far from Omicron and about the virus and its various mutations. Um, over the last couple of weeks, some of the rumors have come out that potentially the nature of Omicron itself suggests that this virus will die out supposedly faster than other viruses have in the past. Is that true? What have we learned about Omicron itself and with respect to what to expect about future variants and the longevity of the virus? virus overall. 
Well, the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is with us. It's not going to magically go back into bats. And some of these variants come and go as the virus is put under Darwinian selection pressure to be able to transmit more efficiently, to get around immunity. And with Omicron, it, it's unclear how long this surge of cases is going to last. If you look at South Africa, if you look at Denmark and the UK, it, it seems to be following a different pattern than, than Delta, for example. Delta went in kind of two-month waves. This seems to be shorter. Hopefully that's the case, but I don't know that we have enough information or understanding. What it might be is that this virus variant is exploiting network effects. It's infecting people that are out there doing things, and then it basically runs out of those types of people, and everybody else is a little bit more careful so it doesn't have new people to infect. Uh, it's unclear if that's going to be the case, but I think we have to all be prepared for the fact that Omicron and other variants down the line are going to become part of our daily lives, but they're going to be a less a less severe version of COVID as, as we get more tools by being vaccinated, monoclonal antibodies, antivirals, rapid tests. That's going to tame this virus and shift illness towards the mild side of the spectrum. And that's exactly where we, where, where we want it. And that's been the goal of this whole public health endeavor from the beginning.